Jack Black, 15 seconds to curtain, Mr. Black. Hi. Uh, where am I? Why am I so fancy? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Jack Black roles. Peach, understand. I'm on the love you tell the very end. For this list, we're looking at the best movie characters this legendary comedian has gifted us over his long career. Is there a memorable Jack Black role we missed? Make like Bowser and roast us in the comments. Number 10. Ignacio, aka Nacho, Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre as a whole may not be the worthiest follow-up to Napoleon Dynamite for director Jared Hess, but it similarly has one uber-memorable title character. Where's your rope, Ignacio? It was stinky, but these are my recreation clothes. In this one, Jack Black plays a Catholic friar named Ignacio who pursues his dream of being a luchador to support a struggling orphanage. Ignacio is naturally torn between his pacifistic upbringing and his secret double life as Nacho. But it's Black's endlessly quotable lines that keep this one at the forefront of our childhood memories. Seriously, we can't put on stretchy pants without thinking of this one. And you would be lying if you weren't shouting this back in 2006. Nacho! Number 9. Miles, The Holiday While we typically associate Jack Black with outlandish comedic characters, he's shown on more than one occasion that he is able to play things more grounded, too. And for anyone who thought he couldn't pull off a love interest in a romantic comedy, think again. Here, Black plays Miles opposite Kate Winslet's Iris, who is having trouble forgetting her cheating ex Jasper. Eventually, Miles too uncovers his own partner's infidelity, prompting him and Iris to bond over their shared woes. Iris, if you were a melody. I used only the good notes. Kate Winslet would be a daunting scene partner for any actor, but Jack oozes chemistry alongside her. He might not have done something like this since, but even this is evidence of his sheer versatility. You know, I've never been to England. I've never been to Europe. No. If I come over there, will you go out with me on New Year's Eve? Number 8. R.L. Stein and Slappy, The Goosebumps Franchise Jack Black didn't star in many high-profile movies in the early 2010s, so imagine our glee when he showed up to play Goosebumps author R.L. Stein in this throwback adventure. Stop trying to be Stephen King, man. Let me tell you something about Steve King. Steve King wishes he could write like me, and I've sold way more books than him, but nobody ever talks about that! Sure, Black doesn't resemble Stein whatsoever, but credit him for being able to craft a character that seamlessly slides into the film's kooky universe. As if that wasn't good enough, he pulls double duty by voicing the book series' most iconic villain, Slappy the Dummy. You guessed it, Slappy. I'm going to destroy Madison and I. And I couldn't do it without you. Oh, shucks. You're giving me... Oh, what's the word? Goosebumps. <laughs> Seriously, we're getting Black at 200% capacity here, as he's clearly having a blast playing off himself. While he only appeared in a cameo in the 2018 sequel Haunted Halloween, we did get a similar role that same year in The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Don't worry, their teeth are made of pumpkin. They can't really hurt us. <sighs> <laughs> Okay, I made that up. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number 7 Barry Judd, High Fidelity. While Jack Black was definitely around in the 90s, he didn't officially arrive until 2000's High Fidelity, a fact even he recognizes. And how could he not, seeing as how good he is in it? Hey, why'd you tell her about the store? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was classified information. I mean, I know we don't have any customers, but I thought that was a bad thing. 
not like a business strategy. This time playing the wacky best friend in a subversive romantic comedy, Black repurposes and makes the archetype his own, transforming it into something wholly idiosyncratic. Indeed, Barry has all the untamped spirit of a 70s-era punk band, and he will not hesitate for a second to let his music tastes be known. It's the new Bell and Sebastian. That it's the record we've been listening to and enjoying, Barry. Well, that's unfortunate because it sucks ass. As solid as lead actor John Cusack is too, Black simply puts forth a presence that demands to be seen and felt, continually giving the tempo of the film the shot of adrenaline it needs. What's your problem? Do you even know your daughter? There's no way she likes that song. Oh, no, oh, oh, is she in a coma? Oh, okay, buddy. I didn't know it was pick on the middle-aged square guy day. My apologies. I'll be on my way. Bye-bye. Number six, Bowser, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Open the gates! Illumination's Super Mario Brothers movie received some casting flack right out the gate. But one choice that worked beautifully is Jack Black as Bowser. Not sure if you know who I am, but I'm about to rule the world. Wow, uh, <laughs> yay. But there's one problem. There's a human, has a mustache, just like you. While the King of the Koopas isn't quite as gruff sounding here as he is in the games, Black is able to imbue the right amount of energy to prop up the character's presence whenever he's on screen. I finally found it. Now who's gonna stop me? Nailing the villain's classic intimidation, Black also helps craft Bowser's more insecure and softer side. After all, at the end of the day, he's just a big old turtle pining after a pretty blonde. Peaches, 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 ah, oh yeah! We don't know whose idea it was to have Bowser sing a Jack Black-esque love ballad, but it is everything. Number 5. Jeff Portnoy, Tropic Thunder <laughs> If there's one thing Jack Black's filmography was missing, it was an action comedy. Nobody move! All right, do the little big guy! That's right, we're running this program now, JP! Now show me where the drugs are! A meta movie through and through, Tropic Thunder has Black playing an entitled movie star who's made a career out of wearing fat suits and playing numerous characters in gross-out comedies. But when production on his Vietnam War movie takes him into the actual jungle, he'll have to become a real soldier. I'm gonna bite his hide. I need, I need to wear his stomach skin like a unitard. The film's entire cast is solid, and Jeff's manic energy as he goes through withdrawal is the powder keg every scene needs. Jeff Portnoy may be Jack Black's zaniest character, but that doesn't make him any less hilarious. If you guys want to make it through this thing, you gotta strap me to a tree. Number 4. Professor Sheldon Shelley Oberon, the Jumanji franchise. Apparently there's something about putting Jack Black in the jungle that just works. No! I'm an overweight middle-aged man. Here, Black plays a video game avatar who's subsequently embodied by characters from the real world. As such, he has to convincingly deliver multiple personalities, which is no easy feat. We didn't think Jack Black essentially playing a teenage girl would be as hysterical as it is, but here we are. <gasps> oh my god, you guys, there's like literally a penis attached to my body right now. Martha, come look at my penis! No thanks! In the sequel, Black Shelley is this time embodied by the hulking Fridge, and he does not miss a beat. Fridge? Yes, I'm Fridge, goddammit! The hell, man! But at the end of the day, Bethany realizes she and Shelley were meant to be. Yes! I missed you so much! Oh my god, you guys, hi! We really hope they make another one of these just so we can see Black in that silly hat again. Number 3. Bernie Tita. Bernie. Bernie is unlike any other Jack Black movie, and it features a performance that's had many critics calling it his best. Were you thinking internment or cremation? Beg your pardon? He means buried or burned. Buried, we already have the plots. I am so happy for you. Can I tell you, I am not fond of cremations. I just don't like the idea of someone spending eternity in something the size of a motel ice bucket. <laughs> like Goosebumps, this one has Black playing a real-life figure in Bernie Tita. Unlike Goosebumps, though, the story is of a much darker variety, as it depicts Tita's murder of his elderly companion Marjorie Nugent. Marjorie, you're making it very hard to be your friend. 
I'm gonna come back some other time. Uh, just go ahead, desert me, just like everybody else. What makes the movie and the true story so fascinating is Tita's stellar reputation in the community as one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Black is so good at conveying this to the point that you almost empathize with Bernie relative to the exceedingly unpleasant Marjorie. I can understand chewing each bite of some food 25 times like chicken fried steak, but I don't think you have to chew your refried beans that many times. It doesn't really make sense. It's unnecessary additional work for your jaws. This is where fact and fiction wonderfully coalesce, and at the center is one incredible performance. Number two, Poe, the Kung Fu Panda franchise. The Dragon Warrior! A panda? That's impossible. My fist hungers for justice. That was my fist. As good as he is in all his animated roles, we refuse to believe Poe could have been played by anyone but Jack Black. Put simply, Kung Fu Panda wouldn't be what it is without the titular character. He's goofy, passionate, and a little bit insecure, but Black's able to convey all of that through Poe's surprisingly profound arc in all the outings. Am I the son of a panda? The son of a goose? A student? A teacher? Turns out, I'm all of them. It is the ultimate zero to hero story, and it simply wouldn't work without making the character instantly relatable. Black's not only able to do that with his innate charm and charisma, he also manages to imbue a healthy amount of humanity as well, despite Poe being a panda. You're just a big, fat panda. I'm not a big, fat panda. I'm the big, fat panda. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Lance Brumder, Orange County. Black slacker older brother is the perfect comedic foil. You're overreacting, dude. I didn't get into college and check me out. I'm kick ass. Lenny, Shark Tale. Black goes all in with this affectation. Oh, oh gee, thanks, Pop. Here's the thing, I'm on a diet. And I read an article about these shrimps. They're not good for you. I'll tell you, you know, you know how many calories are in one of those shrimps? A lot. Carl Denham, King Kong. A much needed humorous presence in the film. You said we were shooting in Singapore, right? That's what you told her. Yeah, but we're not shooting in Singapore. God damn it, Preston. All you had to do was look her in the eye and lie. JB, Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny. How could we not recognize his Tenacious D roots? Can you play a little higher, higher, higher up, higher notes, higher notes, higher notes, higher notes, higher notes, higher notes, can you play any higher notes? Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. Jerry Gerber, Be Kind, Rewind. Black helps make this cult classic, classic. I'm walking down the street, yeah. and you see a little ghost. What? What you gonna do about Ghostbusters? What, what, what is that? That's the Ghostbusters theme song. No. I'm pretty sure it is. Number one, Dewey Finn, School of Rock. Okay, forget Poe. This is the role Jack Black was born to play. I've got a hangover. Who knows what that means? Doesn't that mean you're drunk? No. It means I was drunk yesterday. A wannabe rocker, Dewey Finn is by all accounts washed up when he starts impersonating his roommate as a prep school substitute teacher. However, what starts as a scheme to get a quick buck turns into something special as Dewey makes a connection with his students over their shared love of music. Kitty, what was that thing you were playing today, the big thing? Cello. Okay, this is a bass guitar, and it's the exact same thing, but instead of playing like this, you tip it on the side, cello, you've got a bass. School of Rock is probably the edgiest kids movie we were ever allowed to watch, but it works both then and now thanks to Black's immense personability and zeal. Not only that, but he has such an outstanding rapport with his young co-stars that we want Dewey as our teacher ASAP. And if you will be a teacher's man, we'll be a teacher's man at the end. Rock on no reserve, rock on no rhyme. You better get me to school, I'm sure. Last dismissed. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.